I'm one of the divers who've been working on this project. It was really uh, incredible that on the very first dive we did, it's as black as midnight. I mean, there's no visibility at all. It's just so silty. And you feel around the bottom with your hands, and that's, uh, you know, you can't see a thing. You know, I put my hand on it. I knew, you know, it was something big, and I put my hand right on the dolphin. You know, as soon as I put my hand on that, the first thing I thought was, oh, man, this, this is something. And I put my hand on, you know, when I felt the second dolphin, I knew that, you know, it had to be a cannon. I reached my hand around, slided around the base of the breech end, and felt the cascabel, which is the large knob on that end, and there was no doubt in my mind. And, you know, then we continued along up to the, the muzzle end, and we were able to put our hands inside the bore and everything. And uh, at that point, you know, wow, we just, we surfaced to that point, called everyone over on the boat, and just said, hey, I think we got a cannon. bath of polyethylene glycol for the last four years, but to increase the process, to move the science of conservation forward, we are moving to a, a slightly modified plan in which the dehydration of the wood will take place in a freeze dryer. It's important on many levels. It's important for everyone because it's a bit of Texas history. It's equally as important to people in France because it's a remnant, a trace of their history. It, it's physical and tangible. You can go to a museum and you can look at this ship and you can say, how did 42 or 43 people ever fit on this? Where you may not get the same understanding if you just looked at a drawing in a book.